supplies and power, water, etc. What the U.S. forces were unable to do in Baghdad after toppling down Saddam Hussein, to do that all together. And the asymmetric warfare is also in urban warfare. The, the last conflict during the last 10 years in Sarajevo, in Grozny, in Baghdad, in Mitrovica, in Kabul, in, that are the choking point. We need to be there. And these operations are among population who are looking for security, order, justice, and respect. Each term, it's important. We need to develop the culture of adaptations. And therefore, we need to change. Not to prepare the war that we had been conducted in the 20th century, but that the, the wars that we, will, that we are conducting now. Thank you very much for your attention. Now champagne. <laughs> um, so if, if we sit here, can everyone see us, or, or should we remain standing? I, I think we'll sit down, and we can give you a little rest. Um, I'm fine. Well, all right, then I'll, I'll sit down. Um, let, let me. Um, it's better to stand up in order to be more ready to launch back grenades. Right. Well, let's. <laughs> uh, well, let me uh, let me thank you for uh, uh, that provocative and surprisingly entertaining uh, discussion. Surprisingly? Well, you know, I mean, given yeah. the subject matter, thank, I think, thank uh, you for the compliment. I, I, I think it was, uh, 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 despite the subject matter, I think uh, a great uh, entertainment for us. I think, um, le let me try to just ask a couple of specific questions about some uh, issues that I think are affecting Americans today, and then open it up for uh, your questions. Um, you spoke a lot about the need for adaptation and the fact that um, our militaries have not been prepared to fight the, the kinds of conflicts that uh, we've encountered over the last several years. I think if you uh, talk to most American military commanders today, they would probably agree that uh, prior to 2001, uh, our forces were not um, uh, properly trained and properly arrayed to uh, fight the very conflicts that we've found ourselves in over the last uh, eight years, but mm -hmm. that uh, over the last few years, because of the introduction of counterinsurgency tactics in Iraq, uh, the, the military at the company and platoon level uh, is actually much better uh, equipped today than they ever were to uh, deal uh, and succeed in these environments. Uh, and I, I think you actually see, uh, we're starting to see some of that optimism, which I think was born out of some of the successes in Iraq over the last couple of years, now uh, being evident among the uh, commanders in Afghanistan. Do you believe that optimism is misplaced? Do you think uh, and do you see any way in which the United States and NATO can achieve success in Afghanistan uh, given the current environment? He's pulling out his grenade. I have some, <laughs> I have some ammunition. <clears throat> this booklet, Counterinsurgency Warfare, Theory and Practice, written in 1961-62, has been rediscovered two years ago. Rediscovered by General Petrals. Totally forgotten by the French despite the fact that it was a French colonel. Colonel Trinquier, who wrote also a nice booklet on guerrilla warfare, etc. I rediscovered that in 1990 in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Totally forbidden, forgotten, whatever. So we are rediscovering the wheel or the, the lukewarm water. So, of course, it's better today than eight years ago, fortunately. But we are not still at the appropriate level. And my fear, even if we have made progress, obviously, especially during the last two years, three years, two, three years, um, fortunately, 
But when I see what happens not later than four days ago, when again the happy triggers are shooting blindly as soon as they detect something before cross-checking that it's an appropriate target and killing 21st children and civilian four days ago in Marjaz during this uh, great offensive of uh, 15 NATO soldiers in the south of Afghanistan, do you think that will be very helpful and that is very productive? So we know the rules, but we are unable currently to, to use them or to, to implement them, to implement because it's very difficult. Uh, I made mistake also. Uh, when I, I conducted also some counter-guerrilla operation in Chad on a limited scale, but it was counterinsurgency also, despite the fact that at that time it was not known, not under the CNN cameras. Uh, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because you lose, you, you take risk, you expose your soldiers because you cannot shoot when you have a doubt. It's necessary to be sure that you have a real opponent in front of you before shooting. And when you are orbiting in the air and shooting with a, with a, a standoff missile, okay. you have seen the Germans in Kunduz uh, in last September, shooting uh, also just because uh, they have a, a batch of information telling them that probably uh, it was Taliban uh, uh, with the, the, the tankers, uh, gasoline tankers. How many people killed? With that, when you are there in order to protect the population, the problem in counterinsurgency warfare, the, the victory is when we, you obtain the information by the population, not with technical means. It's when you have the dominance the confidence of the population. If you kill the population, the population will not be with you. And I am afraid to say that due to the fact that we started in 2001 or 2002 in Afghanistan uh, really to conduct operation, during eight years, we have shot quite a large number of uh, Afghan civilians and that uh, is difficult to be forgotten uh, or forgiven and to be swallowed. And especially in, the, in this population, you see, forgiving is not easy to obtain. So my fear is that it's too late. Even if we are good, if, even if we are better, as we are, obviously, my fear is, is that it is too late. And that the only condition now is to fear, is to, to find an acceptable solution in order to permit us to withdraw without losing too much our face, and especially for NATO. I don't know if you are visiting Europe uh, recently or if you go. When I have, uh, living now in Europe and uh, when I have, uh, when I study or I have uh, information coming from the different capitals, the support for Af Afghan intervention is decreasing everywhere. Not because the cost, not because uh, we are, especially in France, we are, we, we fear to have losses. The problem is not there. The problem is that due to the past experience that we had, we know by experience, especially in France, that an insurgency which is not dominated rapidly on the long run, and now we are in the long run terms, we will lose. And I, am, and I, am, I fear to say that uh, we have lost. Let me ask you one more question and then open it up for the audience. Um, and, and that has to do with the nature of the, the threat itself and um, what we're up against over the long uh, haul. I mean, there, there is a whole political debate in the United States about whether uh, 